Hello, everyone. It's Andy Chapman from Insight Partners. I was recently asked to describe how Armstrong's design envelope sensorless pumping worked, and I realized I was going to need some visual aids to be able to do that. So I'd like to start by comparing and contrasting sensorless pumping to a traditional variable speed pumping system. So with a traditional variable speed pumping system, there's a differential pressure sensor that's located out in the system somewhere via a test and balance contractor, a minimum pressure set point is determined, which will satisfy the most remote load during normal operation. Uh, the pump controller is then going to vary the speed of the pump motor via variable frequency drive to ensure that the differential pressure set point is maintained as two-way valves open and close out of the system. The location of the differential pressure sensor is actually critical to the amount of energy that can be saved at the pump. Uh, the first and most ideal location is at the most remote load. So this is the load with the longest run of piping where the fluid is going to experience the most pressure drop before reaching the load. And the set point is typically the pressure drop needed to overcome the control valve, the strainer, the balancing valve, the coil, etc. in a short run of piping. Uh, this allows your minimum head set point to be low in comparison to the full flow head pressure set point and allows a great deal of pump turndown. So a second option that is sometimes used is mounting the sensor two thirds of the way down the piping system. And the minimum head set point is now going to be the remaining one third of the piping uh, along with the remote loads, control valve, strainer, coil, balancing valve, et cetera. So this minimum differential Pressure set point is going to be a little bit higher, but it's going to still allow decent energy savings. Uh, the last location that's often used in retrofit applications and when an engineer doesn't specify an exact location of the sensor, uh, which is in the mechanical room or between the pump and the first load. So the minimum head pressure set point is then basically set at the pressure drop of the entire piping system and allows very little turndown. So Armstrong has developed their design envelope sensorless control, which emulates the performance of a remotely mounted sensor by monitoring the pump's power consumption and speed, which directly correlates to a specific flow and head. And I'm gonna talk about how that's achieved in some following slides. So each design envelope pump is equipped with either a factory mounted VFD or an ECM and an intelligent pump controller, which has a specific pump map programmed into the controller. So sensorless control works on, based on four parameters, power, speed, head, and flow. So our dynamic pump sizing and selection program works in the same way. Uh, if you input flow and head into our selection program, you get as an output power and speed, along with impeller size, efficiency, pump size, et cetera. Uh, the sensorless controller reads power and speed from the VFD or the ECM to figure out the flow and head based on the tested pump map. Uh, thus, the program always knows precisely where it's operating and could allow you to remove a flow meter uh, and or a power meter. So all sensorless control pumps are tested complete with pump motor controls package by recording the flow, head, power, and speed at 10 points along the maximum speed curve and at 90 other points along nine other speeds all the way down to the pump minimum speed uh, set point. So all this data, these pump coefficients are then uploaded into the controls map for that specific pump so that we know the exact flow and head at any power and speed combination, which is being measured by the controller on site. This is cutting edge technology for pump controls, uh, but Armstrong has actually been using this type of data in their selection software for over 25 years. So visually, you can see how power and speed are related back to flow and head. Uh, check out this example pump map. Um, additionally, we program into the controller a quadratic control curve that takes into account the minimum head required to satisfy your most remote load and draws a quadratic control curve up to the design flow and head. So uh, that control curve also generates a corresponding power and speed curve. Um, and so as, 
as valves start to close out of the system, your flow is going to drop and your head is going to increase, but it's going to be in a square root relationship. So the resulting power consumption at that given speed is actually going to drop. So that's going to take you off the power speed control curve. And in order to get back onto the control curve, the pump controller will slow down the speed of the pump until the appropriate power consumption is reached via their map. So again, as valves start to open in the system, your flow is going to increase and your head will decrease in that same square root relationship. So the resulting power consumption at that given speed uh, is going to increase, taking you off the control feeds curve. So in the opposite fashion, the pump controller will speed up the pump until it reaches the appropriate power consumption. Additionally, if you have to make adjustments out in the field, uh, if the minimum head required needs to be adjusted, we can program a new minimum head set point into the controller and it's going to draw a new quadratic control curve for the on-site conditions. So finally, in summation, uh, traditional pump control schemes sense changes in the system via feedback from a differential pressure sensor located somewhere out in the system and modulates the VFD speed to maintain a certain differential pressure set point. Uh, BMS systems often incorporate separate water flow and power meters uh, as additional data points for the plant operators. Uh, in comparison, Design Envelope Sensorless Control monitors pump speed and motor amp draw, compares it to its sensorless map and control curves. And as changes occur out in the system, the pump speed changes to achieve the correct power and speed combination. So the BMS system through one back net connection uh, can pull in power consumption, pump speed, pump flow, pump head, status, and alarms. Uh, which can eliminate as many as four separately installed devices and takes out the guesswork as to where uh, to install a DP sensor. So this can greatly reduce total installation costs. Uh, so if you're retrofitting an existing pumping system or designing a new pumping system, uh, think about using Armstrong's design envelope sensorless control uh, to help simplify things. Thanks for watching and I hope all this made sense.